Marshall, I loved your film. Thank you. Um, I, as I was watching it, I was, um, I was a little dismayed by some of the strong arm tactics that Sharp James <laughs> used against Booker and, and against, and you guys. Uh, how, did, how did this campaign of intimidation affect your filming? Well, you know, I, I didn't have a sense of what I was getting into when I started making the film. I didn't understand how political intimidation was a part of, of politics there. You know, the, the city of Newark uh, is in sort of a media shadow of New York City. And so, as a result, for a long time, Newark had been able to operate without scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And when suddenly Cory Booker appeared and, and, and started uh, generating a lot of, of interest in the media, Sharp James um, did not like it. He didn't like the attention, he didn't like the scrutiny, and he didn't like the idea that I was there making a documentary film. And so his uh, security detail, um, Newark Police, um, tried to stop me from making the film, and in a number of cases, it became physical. My camera was broken at one point, and, and, and it was honestly kind of scary. And did you find yourself, as, as a filmmaker, um, feeling persecuted or sort of joining Booker's campaign? I mean, how did you resist that as you were making the film? Right. Um, I mean, one of the big challenges of making the film was to try to be fair to both sides. But I also didn't want to fall into the trap that I think a lot of the media does of kind of he said, she said reporting. Mm. To me, the media should be referees. And a good referee doesn't call the same number of fouls on both sides. A good referee calls fouls when there are fouls. Mm. And so if one side is committing a lot more fouls, you're going to call them out more, which is what I witnessed on this campaign. Sharp James and Cory Booker are, you see them coming from two different generations of, of black political leadership. Right. Talk a little bit about that generational divide. Um, one of the things that, that got me interested in this film was this idea that, that we were at a kind of BC, AD moment in African American politics. That, that up until just a few years ago, almost all of the people who were part of the political process um, from the African American community had come of age before the Civil Rights Movement or during the Civil Rights Movement. And, and after that, there was a whole group of people who had come of age after the Civil Rights Movement, who had been beneficiaries of the Civil Rights Movement, and had had experiences that the previous generation could have never had. They'd gone to Ivy League schools, and they'd mm -hmm. um, you know, lived in, in integrated suburbs. And, 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 and I think they worried that if you grew up in the suburbs of New Jersey, or you went to Stanford or Yale, that maybe you wouldn't understand what, what you know, working people went through in Newark, and, and maybe you wouldn't uh, represent them properly. So I, I, I think there's, um, there's, there's merit to, the, to, to, to wanting somebody who has come from your community to represent you. On the other hand, I think it can, it can be self-destructive and cyclical that if, if the only people who can represent you are people who are just like you or who have had all of the same challenges that you've had, it makes it hard to, to, to move beyond. 